It's here. The trailer for the Tomb Kings has launched. So today we're going to go over everything that's come out. So many goodies here for you today, guys. I'm just going to go ahead and press start on this trailer. Uh, the beginning portion doesn't really matter a whole ton, but we'll go through the trailer, take a look at what we see in the trailer from as far as a, a units reveal go. Then we'll talk about uh, the developer blog that they launched as well as the, let's lower that a little bit, as well as the um, Steam page. The Steam page actually has a ton of good goodies. Now, why aren't you at a whopping 1080? Um, let that load here for a second. But um, so we'll, we'll go through and right here, actually, right off the bat, we see a sh we see an assassin and some shades. Now, these might not actually enter the game. Um, it's it's actually talked about that the Dark Elves are not even going to be in the game at all. I'm full of shit. Let's move back here to where I want to show you guys, which is the Ushabti. Um, from, we know from the lore video that I just released um, that the Ushabti actually stand guard just in this very in this very uh, method. So we we know that immediately that we just used some Ushabti with some hand weapons. Um, these don't look like the Great Weapon variant. They're not going to do much damage to dwarfs. Um, I, I mean, the shades here, uh, just just complete rubbish. Very great set of tattoos in those shades. But remember, we've talked about how the Ushabti have differing heads depending depending on which god that they're dedicated to. Typical Dark Elf. Typ let's just go back to that. Typical Dark Elf. Typical Dark Elf going just right for the peen. Just... Get a room, guy. Like, good God, have some self-respect. Ugh, there it is. Yep. Mm-hmm. But God, this is—I I think I've watched this trailer like fifty times by now. But it is so worth it every, each and every time. A good unlitting as it is. So we definitely see some some. Ushabti here with dual Kopeshes. So that kind of tells me that we're going to probably have them as a as three variants. One with bows, one with great weapons, they're, they're big large staves, or one with Kopeshes that maybe is an anti-infantry model. So anti-large, anti-infantry, and, um, you know, bow, being an AP bow. And we're going to see a lot more of them coming up here. One pissed off Dreadlord. And, and as we've kind of talked about already, um, and I'm very excited to see these are the Tomb Kings. You can see the interred Tomb Priest on its back real briefly there before it jumps back into the sands. We talked about how it's going to have that really cool entomb within the sands, or beneath the sands mechanic. And then boom, Cetra comes in on his mighty chariot, Chariot of the Gods, coming in deep. Tons of chariots in general here. Um, expect this to be just like uh, a Sirtha Ek that we've all known and love, but not. Let's back that up just a little bit. Okay, so in right here we see some Ushabti, we see a War Sphinx right there, we see some Carrions, uh, we see some Sepulchral Stalkers here as well. I think we actually see some, uh, right here actually are the Necropolis Knights that we'll get a better shot of in a second. Some Carrions again, some just kind of, let's back you up, back, 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 get up. And that, so that's a screaming skull from the screaming skull, skull catapults that we'll see in a second here. But I'm just going to say that these are probably just miscellaneous skeleton warriors, if not um, the tomb guard. And boom, War Sphinx is going to be smashing in here. We see some larger constructs here in the background as well. More of those screaming skulls, more of these Ushabti. Uh, these, again, just your typical skeleton warriors is what it looks like. I don't see any grave guard, or not grave guard, tomb guard. Boom! Look at that Necro Sphinx just slashing up the land. Going back for a quick replay on that before we uh, finish off with probably the, the coolest reveal of this trailer um, is... Look at that. The Hero Titan. Didn't have a model in the actual... Um, Tabletop, we know that. We didn't have an art even from the tabletop. We have nothing to go off of. So Creative Assembly's um, interpretation of what that Hero Titan looks like is, oh man, that was a perfect, that was a perfect pause, not even blurred or anything. But look at that thing. Look at that thing. And then it's got some great laser eyes. It's like Cyclops on steroids. I love it. Boom! Sunder the land. 
So Rise of the Tomb Kings comes out the 23rd or 28th? Uh, 23rd. There it is. We see we have Setra right here. Um, and we already kind of know a little bit about the roster. Let's jump on over here. Some of the some of the goodies released here by the by Total War and they're in their kind of FAQ of what is the Rise of the Tomb Kings. God, I love this. I, I love every single one of these pictures that they release for every one of the races. Um, the Hyles one was really cool. I like the Lizard one, Lizardman one a lot, but this one's just so rad. Um, I wonder if there's any other goodie reveals from this that I can that I can see. You know, pretty much everything that we with, we just saw. I mean, this is definitely these are your Grave Guard. God, I keep wanting to say Grave Guard, Tomb Guard. Effectively the same damn thing. So we he, we know now that this is we know now for sure as they said this would not be a mini campaign. We were going to be getting more legendary lords, all four to be exact. Um, Setra right there on his uh, chariot of the gods. So we know we're going to get Setra the imperishable, and they've given us a little hint as to how these are going to be interpreted into the game. Right, Setra is a great leader, bringing bonuses to growth, public to group to both. Uh, Bonuses to growth and public order while reducing construction time. He also confers bonuses to skeleton chariots and tomb guard, not grave guard. It has a selection of unlockable mounts, including the Cambrian War Sphinx, which I found kind of surprising. Um, his only mount in the tabletop is the Chariot of the Gods. So I don't know why they're doing this. Maybe just because Cetra on a Cambrian War Sphinx would just be super OP. But we'll, we'll kind of see what that looks like later on as we get more of uh, the reveal of, goodie, of the goodies. Uh, High Queen Kalita, the kind of archer lord that we've talked about here. And she's going to have diplomatic bonus, diplomatic relations bonuses with other Tomb King factions. All forms of, She gets a, reduces all forms of, of corruption. Hefty bonus to ammunition for all ranged units across her faction. She also confers poison attacks on all units in her army and suffers considerably less from attrition effects. A lot of the effects that we had talked about in our video on Kalita. Um, so I'm really excited to see her as well as Grand Hierophant Katep. And now he grants a bonus to dynasty research rate, which we'll go into in a sec here, and improves casualty replenishment and army movement faction wide. And he also can recruit a higher number of lich priest heroes and recruits them at a higher rank. And I, if I sound excited, guys, it's because I'm super excited. And then the other lord, other boy in the band, Arkin the Black. Now Arkin enjoys bonus diplomatic relations with vampire count factions, and his region suffers uh, regions. His regions never suffer public order penalties from vampiric corruption. Heroes embedded in his army gain melee attack and melee defense bonuses, and all his armies faction wide gain a boost to their winds of magic power reserve. So, we we now we know our uh, four confirmed lords now. So that's really exciting. I think that in our video we talked about them being kind of like the the most likely of the four. Ark in the Black is is so integral to the history of not just Nagash or Undead as a whole, but also to the Tomb Kings. So I'm very curious to see where they're going to let him start on the map. Uh, if he's going to be maybe more northeast, closer towards um, the World's Edge Mountains and the Vampire Counts, or if he's going to be just on the eastern end of Kemri or uh, uh, Nehekara while Setra is sitting there smack dab in Kemri. Uh, but we'll, we shall see. So there's some other aspects that we're going to get here. They, you know, they've, they've kind of concerned that this is going to be in both Eye of the Vortex and the Mortal Empires. But for Eye of the Vortex, they're not going to be fighting for the Vortex campaign. They've got their own separate mechanic, their own really cool mechanic that's very thematic to the to the lore of the Tomb Kings. The Tomb Kings don't give a shit about the Vortex. They don't even know what a demon really well, they know what a demon is, but they don't care. Um, they do care about or the nine books of Nagash. So that's going to be their kind of driving mechanic. They're going to be scouring the map, as it says right here, for the books of Nagash. And on top of it, they've got these cool canopic jars that are going to add as a, a Tomb King's unique resource. And it says here to craft magic items and raise fabled legions of legend at the Mortuary Cult. I don't know if this means that we're going to be seeing legions of legend in the same way that we see you, uh, the unique spawnings of Lizardmen, or if this is just their way of saying Regiments of Renown. So I'm really excited to see more of those, those details on those, legend, those Legions of Legend because it's a really nifty mechanic that they've done. And lastly, we have a really nifty one too with, with Realm of Souls. So everyone's got that combat mechanic, right? Uh, we've got uh, Martial Prowess, we've got Murderous Prowess with the, uh, the two elves. Now we've, we're going to get a Realm of Souls. And actually it's got these three thresholds and as you approach the thresholds, there's a mass healing that goes out across the entire battlefield that both heals and resurrects your Tomb Kings. So there's going to be a lot of healing coming out from this, this army here. Even in their lore, every, which is their lore actually doesn't have 
an outright healing spell. They're, the lore of Nehekara is a bunch of buffs, but each one of those buffs, because of the the lore attribute, actually heals. So I love to, it's almost like the lore of life. So I love to see that kind of wide sweeping heal always being kind of poured into the Tomb King army. So we'll, we'll jump actually over here now to the Steam page. The Steam page has a lot of really good information here. Um, talks about the Book of Nagash, talks about the Realms of Souls, talks about those canopic jars that we were talking about, the, the unique resource. I, I, I'm hoping that they're not in any way like the Amber of the Wood Elves. I think they kind of learned their lesson from that too. I think they know the, the Wood Elves are none too popular when it comes to that that unique tradable or that unique resource. We, oh, we see the Cameron War Sphinx has a breath attack like, like we've talked about. Um, but I'm really excited to see how they how they actually use that those canopic jars and how they're going to be able to craft magic items and raise these these legions these uh, legions of legend let's actually start out with some of these uh some of these guys because there's one picture on here okay that's our that's our really more fleshed out uh, uh catapult here but these are definitely not necrolith colossuses the necrolith colossus is actually one of the only units missing from the roster that we haven't seen here i mean we see our skeleton archers we see our skeleton cab in a second i'll show you um but we have not seen the swarms the tomb swarm as a, as a selectable unit we'll get to them in a sec but necrolith colossus is the giant that we've talked about that can be either wielding a weapon or it can be wielding the bow of the desert from our uh, lore video so we haven't heard about them just yet, but I don't think that th I don't think they're not going to make the list. The Tomb Kings don't have a huge list to begin with or anything that's completely crazy, so I think it's pretty safe to say. We have lovely Kalita here, looking ravishing in her death mask. Uh, oh, there's some Graveguard, maybe? No. God damn, there it is again. Graveguard, Tomb Kings, Tomb Guard, Tomb Stuff. Nothing special there, but this is the big one I wanted to talk about. So we see here two different types of Ushapti. We see the bows and we see the just what would it be just normal hand weapons or kopesh. Um, we see our skeleton archers here. I think that these are standard skeleton warriors. And I think these, oh no, these look like they're skeleton warriors with halberds. So um, maybe these are going to be our tomb guard. And the, actually, they look like the same damn picture. Look, like they're both skeleton warriors, one with swords, one with uh, halberds. We have our uh, Necrotech Knights here. Looks with two, two variations of, of weaponry as well, with and without shields. Um, we have our Sepulchral stalker, Sepulchral Stalkers. We also have um, what looks to be just like Cetra. Now we notice though that these do have the Regiments of Renown symbol there. So it's going to be really interesting to see what that is. They are already at max rank too. So I think that these are actually Regiments of Renown and not just your standard, or not just like Legions of the legendary legions or whatever uh, legions of legend because i think that the, le the legions of legend won't start at full rank like that i think they'll just have some different mechanics we also see the realm of souls which equals out once the realm of souls all the way completes you can summon some ushabti from the realm of souls which are interred with these uh with this with the spirits of heroes so it makes a lot of sense lore wise but each one of these as it goes across gives us that healing we've talked about and we can see that that Ushabti right there is a, is a summonable, just like uh, uh, the menace below. And here's the other picture I really wanted to go into because we have quite a bit in this one too. Uh, because we've got our Necro Sphinx, which looks to be like a actual... I mean, even if we take a look at this picture... I'm taking a look at these two. and they, they Oh, that's a Sphinx. That's a, that's a War Sphinx, not a Necro Sphinx. So um, that's a Regiment of Renown as well. One here as well. So we've got some pretty interesting things right out the gate here. They're going to get a lot of regiments around that we don't actually even see for the High Elves and Dark Elves. Maybe this is the chance that they're actually going to add those regiments around into the game. I'd, I'd be so stoked with that. But we see our Casket of Souls, our fixed um, artillery piece war machine type thing. But then we also see our uh, skeleton horsemen, skeleton cavalry as it were. Um, so I'm really, 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 really excited to see these uh, these things kind of fleshed out here, guys. We see our chariots as well, our tomb scorpions, um, more of the archers. So a lot more of the stuff that we've already really kind of seen. But we see, again, some of the starting locations here. This looks like it's all the way on the west northwestern um, po portion of the Southlands. Now, this is interesting here. So if we take a look at this, we see we're far in the west almost right by Nagaroth. And that's a pretty interesting starting location for the Tomb Kings, I'd say. Because we also come over here, 
Um, and I believe that we, we discussed this is Kemri, so this is right smack dab in the land of the dead. We've got Setra himself right there. And we've got this little baby who's going to be more towards the Turtle Islands. This, this land is already uh, just a ruin in the current iteration of the game. This is just east of Teclis' starting position, which is right there, actually, as we can see. So this, we get a lot of really good... Uh, a lot of really good information from these screenshots, and they probably did this intentionally, but oh, look at that picture. So cool. So cool. So awesome. Okay. But if we scroll down here, we hear a little bit about the Diocese of Nehekara. So no longer are we going to have a very standard uh, technology route. Instead, it says, you know, rather than developing new technologies, the Tomb Kings seek to unearth the achievements of their dynastic forebears. So you're going to be able to summon uh, unique lords that are in line with the Diocese of Nehekara that give specific uh, research benefits of that dynasty's kind of uh, specific or prolific era or what they were what they specialized in the most so very very exciting to see how that's going to pan out um, i hope it doesn't cause for a lot of lord bloat and and upkeep bloat because that would be very not fun because i think oh i think if the, the best thing about that whole mechanic is that it is a little bit more unique than the other races but i just hope at the expense that you can that it doesn't like gate you from going down and, and taking advantage of multiple uh researches We'll see how that goes. Zoom is zoomed in on this a little bit so you can see it better here, guys. Um, but they're saying canopic jars can be collected through missions, buildings, and post-battle loot. So we've got a bunch of different ways we can we can be collecting canopic jars in the same very way we see food being collected for the Skaven. Because it, there are portions that or there are things that will generate those canopic jars on probably some events of the sort, or maybe even a building or two in the same way that maybe that high elf influence is, is generated very sparingly, but it is generated nonetheless. Which actually brings us into our rites, our four big rites. So we've got the, in, the Great Incantation of Petra. This one's pretty cool because it gives us a unique necrotect. And as we know, that's necro and architect slapped together. Which basically gives you a unique hero capable of colonizing ruins at city level 3. Forgoes a lot of growth you have to deal with and a lot of uh, income investment into that, that uh, province, that city. So that's pretty amazing. But then we've got the Great Incantation of Kashar. Or Kassar, and this one is focused mainly on basically the invaders. We don't want any invaders into our, our foreign land, so cause or our land, any foreign invaders. This causes attrition to foreign armies, increases your ambush success chance, and confers the army ability Sand Veil. Enables a unit to become hidden and gain stock in battle, making them invisible to the enemy until they draw very close. And we've got the great incantation of Geheb. Invoking the god of strength increases canopic jar generation and province growth. Reduces construction time and confers the army ability Tomb Swarm. So here's the Tomb Swarms we talked about. But it's an army ability like a vortex spell. So I think this is going to be something like a, like a Menace of the Swarm. Menace of the Swarm? What the hell? I, I, you know, I like that ability. Menace of the Swarm. Sounds fun. But Menace below, that's on the right side. You activate it just like any other of the... Uh, the army abilities that we see maybe from like the dark elves and the such and you pop it real quick and it's just a quick vortex spell i don't think there's going to be an actual unit you can control or a vortex that stays on the map for any prolonged period of time nothing like that but the last right here is invoking the god of scholars or uh, i'm sorry the great incantation of tahoth uh, invoking the god of scholars adds a casket of souls magical artillery unit to the recruitment pool it also confers a rank bonus to newly recruited tomb kings and unit recruits and increases in recruitment capacity faction wide so a lot of great stuff coming out here we also know cool thing here though too this confirms the tomb prince the lich priest the necrotect we get a lot of really cool mechanics from these guys too here right so the the tomb prince gets a unique curse ability which makes targeted enemies enter a state of rampage so being being able to trigger that rampage at whim is pretty cool and they can also have skeletal steeds and skeletal chariots oh it's, it's worth noting as well here that the tomb king can have skeletal steed chariot and Cambrian war sphinx that's uh should have definitely talked about that <laughs> oops sorry about that but our last thing here our last two here are the uh lich priest and the necrotect the lich priest has access to lore of light Death and the Hekara, a pretty great selection of lores here. Um, they also have the curse ability, which reduces enemy armor values, making them a lot more susceptible to um, burst damage. And that's pretty damn cool, I think, here too. They can have uh, skeletal steeds or chariots as their mounts. And lastly, our Necrotect. And 
Um, this one's pretty cool because, you know, they perform a number of functions such as reducing building costs and increasing movement speed when embedded in your armies, but also fulfill a key support role in battle. And this is something we talked about on a lore video is how are this necro how are the necrotechs going to be put into the game as far as benefiting the constructs? Well, what it's going to do is a passive or a based buff to construct units such as Ushabti, Tomb Scorpions, and Hero and Hero Titans, Hero Titans, improving their combat abilities in a number of ways. So we'll see how that pans out, but they can, they can ride scale skeletal steeds and chariots i'm surprised they didn't allow them to be mounted on war sphinxes might be just a little too strong but pretty pretty lore friendly if they did you know eh, neither here nor there so our next video will go into the lore of nehekara and what it really goes into and so you guys have an idea of how that how that buff magic works and how that lore attribute really gives a lot of constant healing to the tomb king army but so much exciting stuff came out here today, guys. I mean, this is a 20 minute video. Usually these things are usually like 10, 11 minutes. I'm so excited to see these guys. Uh, just an amazing trailer reveal from CA. Like, holy crap. Was not expecting that at all. And like the whole day has been like a flurry of, of uh, hecticness. And I'm like, oh my God, this is, I'm so hyped up right now. I'm on the choo-choo, I'm on the train. Uh, but we're looking at around, what, a month and uh, four or five days until this comes out. So, Hang tight, guys. We're gonna get there. We'll get there together. This is a this is a, a safe a trust a trust trust circle trust trust tree. You're in our trust tree right now, but we'll get there together. And uh, I'll definitely be doing a a stream that whole day of the Tomb Kings. But be on the lookout for more goodies. Hopefully, we'll get a full roster reveal from them soon from Creative Assembly as they typically do at this point. But thanks for watching so far, guys. Um, I'll put at the end of this video a link to all of the. Uh, lore videos that I've done on this. If you want to know more about it, please delve on into that. Just put up a grand two hour video on it. So feel free to jump on in and enjoy. But thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one and take care.